1130 podcast. Where were you was when the nigga was when was at, man? I was on my ass. You tell me. I was stuck in the tree. Ain't nobody help me down. Ain't nobody help me down. Let's get Go on places that you never seen. You think I'm fucked up, boy? I'm living my dream. Just leave me alone if you're not with the team. My brain too smart to come up with a scheme. If I said it, then I meant it, and I know what I mean. Had me a vision, it was fucking with my dream. Yo, what it do, everybody? It's your man, Dre, a.k.a. Dre on wheels. Y'all already know what it is, man. Welcome back, you guys, to the 1130 Podcast. What's good, everybody doing out there, man? I appreciate you guys joining me back here for another episode. You did, man. Good morning, good night, good afternoon to all my listeners, man, that's joining me back here on the podcast, man. Oh, man, I feel good. Hope you guys feel good. For real, shout out to all my listeners that's listening to me on EB Radio this morning. Happy Wednesday. It's hump day. (laughs) And everybody, man, who's watching on YouTube, appreciate it so, so much. If you guys new to the channel, man, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Yes, hit that subscribe button. Smash the notification bell so you don't miss an episode. Like it. Leave a comment. Yes, leave a comment. So I know you're there, man. I'll shout you out and all that good stuff, for real. And share it so we can get the 1130 podcast up up and out there even more you guys and also don't forget you guys to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms but you guys man i'm back here with another dope episode man it's wednesday so um, you know i'm back man <laughs> you know i'm back man i got a dope show lined up man my guest this week you guys my man slide the deuce man he's from denver colorado you guys he's a songwriter he's a music publisher he's a business uh growth strategist just to name a few you guys He's going to be joining me here this week on the 1130 podcast, man. That's going to be dope, man. To pick his brain, to learn something, man. For real, man. Especially as black, you know, black people in the world, man. And this time, man, we need a, we need our own business, man. And we need our, our own. Let's put it like that. But my man Slider Deuce, man, he's going to be joining me here on the 1130 podcast in just a bit, man. But before we get to that, I want to shout out my guest who was on last week. My guest, uh, Glenisha, I appreciate you so, so much. Dope, dope ass art. I love it. Uh, Thank you for joining me on the podcast last week. And also, shout out to my guy, Alex Townsend. Thank you, man. Uh, I know this week you're starting off camera duty, so uh, congratulations, and Keep doing your thing. But you guys, man, I'm back here, man. You know it. 11.30 podcast, man. It's on time, man. It's on. So here we go, man. Let's get to the show. My guest, man, Slide the Deuce. Yo, man, from Denver, Colorado. What's going on, man? It's a pleasure to be here, man. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so glad that you have me. Um, I'm looking forward to a great show. Okay, okay, man. Slide the deuce, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it you being here, man. Um, how your day going? Man, it's going great, man. Going great. How about you? It's going wonderful, man. It's going wonderful, man. I, you know, I just, I have fun every time I'm doing this, man. Just meeting different people every week, man. Just talking to them, getting to know them, man. Just seeing what they're about. And also, you know, allowing them to come here, man, with me, man. And, you know, because half of the time, sometimes I, I be doing it by myself with you. But, you know, and when I have a guest, just come through, man, and just... Chat it up, man. Chat it up. But uh, once again, appreciate you joining me. It's Slide of Deuce, man. Uh, for my listeners and viewers who joining me this week, don't it's not familiar with you. You tell my listeners something about you. Yeah, man. Uh, they can tap in with me on Instagram, IG. That's the same thing. My bad. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all of that. I'm Slide the Deuce. S L Y space T H A space D E U C E. Um, and like you said before, man, I'm a songwriter. I've been making music for, man, more than more than 10 years at this point. Uh, music publisher, I own a music publishing company. It's actually my, my, my background right here, Outlandish Enterprises. Um, so shout out to everybody out there that's taking themselves serious and building business and building a brand around themselves. Um, and I'm also a growth strategist. So I speak with small business owners and I also speak with creatives about how to make themselves small business owners and recognize that they are small business owners because they're creating um, intellectual property. They're creating written works when they write their lyrics. Uh, They're creating digital content when they're putting stuff out. So helping them to really focus and maximize their wealth opportunities while they build fame. I don't always talk about fame. I mean, fame's kind of fickle, comes and goes. You got to do some crazy things in this game to get to a certain level. Um, But if your mind is on the money, then you can absolutely build a, a profitable brand and business for yourself um, and your loved ones. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Denver, Colorado, originally, currently repping Dallas. Uh, man, I'm all over, though. I'm, I'm all over. I, I travel the country and host events, um, poetry events, spoken word events, 
cultural um, like history. We're working with a, a company right now called uh, Black Ball Negro League Baseball. And so they we go all around and talk about um, the 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 history, the rich history that that the culture has. I don't I don't want to get too far off track, but um, got got my fingers in a little bit of everything. Um, and very, very excited about linking up with like-minded people such as yourself. Um, you have an amazing audience. The people that the people that tune in and what you got going on um, are some great folks. You're great folks. So I'm just excited to be here, man. Let's let's dive right into whatever you got for us today. Hey, man, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. We're going to dive all into it, man, for real. You uh, you just mentioned your business, man, because, you know, uh, as Black brothers, we we, we want to have our own business. You know, it's always, you know, going working, you know, for the man and stuff like that. So we, you know... We want to have our own business. So you got your own business. You just mentioned Outlandish. Can you tell me a little something about it? So Outlandish Enterprises, that is my company. Um, we do the, like I said, publishing. I, I, excuse me. I built the company actually to protect myself. You know, every business that, and, and you just touched on a great point, wanting to build a business for yourself can be extremely powerful, but also understanding some of the caveats and nuance of business, you can build a business to protect your own assets. You don't necessarily have to build a giant monolithic corporation that employs a bunch of people. You don't have to do that necessarily to have a business. So a lot of times I think people are nervous about going into business because they, like you mentioned, they've only been employees and there's nothing against, you know, your life experience. But when you're an employee, you're normally an employee of a very large publicly traded company. You may have been an employee of a small company. Um, but that's a little bit different than being a business owner who has the ability to somewhat leverage those assets or some of those purchases in your own favor. So um, I actually started my publishing company to protect and manage my own portfolio. So that way I was able to capture all of the royalties that are that are part of a, a song uh, of, of, of a composition. Um, but we also do consulting. So that's mainly what I do externally facing. So people can book time with me. I like to really, really figure out what are their goals? What are they looking to get done? Because there's there's six million ways to skin a cat, right? There's there's six million ways to get rich and the music business is no different. Um, knowing exactly what you want to do can help you do a couple of things. One, it can help you verbalize that, right? Be able to actually say that to someone in clear, concise terms. It will help you to not waste time with people that cannot help you achieve your goal, right? Somebody might be very nice. They might be very great, uh, you know, cool people, but if they can't deliver on what you actually need done, then that may be a waste of your time and time is a serious resource. So that's another thing we also talk about time management as an artist. What is your, you know, your release schedule? What is your cadence? Uh, same as like, you got to have flow on the microphone. You got to have flow off the microphone. You know, it doesn't matter if you're dropping one album a year, or if you're dropping one project a month, as long as you're staying consistent. So helping to develop that consistency and get an understanding for, again, what is your goal and how do we achieve that? Um, perfect example is uh, a lot of times we want to just be put on, right? Man, I'm just waiting for somebody to put me on mm -hmm. or I can't wait to get signed. Yeah. And it's like, get, get signed to what? Get signed to a distribution deal? Get signed to a publishing deal? Get signed to a songwriting deal? Um, you know, there's so many different caveats. I know people that are signed with cash money, um, but they're songwriters, you know what I mean? So you may not have ever heard of them as an artist. You may never bought their album. So if your version of Poppin' is my album release party, well, this person's never done that. This person isn't, isn't, hasn't achieved by that definition, but this person is getting checks right now from cash money for their bars. Somebody else is just spitting them. You see what I'm saying? Because they're a songwriter. So it's about, it's very important to understand some of the different roles and responsibilities in the music game um, and then figure out exactly what you want to do and, and, and how to do it. So in a nutshell, that's what I do. I do a little bit more. Um, I really deep dive into the performance rights organizations. That's your ASCAP, your BMI. Those are the ones that collect your performance royalties, um, which is important. Again, I, I, some people might just be doing it for fame. I do it to take care of my family, do it to, uh, you know, I like nice clothes and stuff like that, but it's really about, you know, being able to provide. And so it's important mm -hmm. to really, really go in with the end in, in mind, um, in my opinion. And so that's, that's what I help to do. Um, different people. I normally work with people that are new into their musical journey, because I'm talking about what I would consider to be some entry level steps, you know, making sure you register with a PRO, making sure that you have a, a firm understanding of what you're looking to do. But this is the real world. Sometimes we get, we get going, 
we get we get uh, gung ho about something. And honestly, that's what it takes sometimes. Sometimes you got to be willing to just dive out, you know, dive in and, and mm-hmm. jump out there and kind of get the momentum going. And then you realize, all right, well, I got this momentum. I got this energy. I need to really go, you know, make sure I got my mind right. And so, like I said, we work with people at all different facets of their musical journey and their musical walk. Um, we work with producers as well. They they really, I think, are very, very underserved or under educated maybe it would be there's some great resources out there so i'm not trying to say i'm the only person spitting game at the producers but um they are i think really the gatekeepers they really hold the keys and when you understand how to leverage your relationships with producers and build relationships with producers it can help to exponentially grow uh your music career in a, in a bunch of different areas hey man that's that's, that's right that's right because in the music business man you can get tricked you can get really really tricked man um, you, you spoke on consistency. Can you tell uh, my listeners and viewers, man, how important consistency is, man? Man, it's 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 really the name of the game. Um, I would say that the only the, the, it's the only way to make it is is to be consistent. You know what I'm saying? People didn't always love what Soldier Boy was putting out, but you knew he was going to drop something new. People don't always love what Kodak Black puts out, but you know he's going to drop something new. Uh, perfect example going back, Gucci Man. Perfect example going back farther, Mike Jones. You mm-hmm. know, like Outcast. You know, yeah. Nas. Even the people that are quote unquote lyrical or quote unquote dope. If Nas had dropped one mixtape in his little neighborhood and was like, "Bro, I'm the illest. I'm I'm nice. I don't know why niggas don't don't just make me go platinum." Like, bro, it doesn't work like that. You gotta push, 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 push. We saw Nas in movies. We saw we see Nas in commercials. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, so you gotta be out there. Um, but I feel like I'm getting a little bit more into the the advertising side of the talk track. And I want to make sure I'm sticking on what you're doing, because I don't I want to encourage you no matter where you are. I'm not saying you need to jump ship. You need to be focused on 500 other things, because that is another pressure. I know we deal with as creatives, always feeling like you're juggling so many things. What I will say, though, is consistency is so important because it can take very, very small inputs and create very great results with consistency. Whereas if I were to take, I'm just making this example up, but if I were to take, um, say $500 right now, right. And run Mm -hmm. a Facebook, I would get a bunch of results. I would get a bunch of clicks. I would get a bunch of views and a bunch of traffic. And if I'm doing my pixels and everything, right, I'll get a bunch of, um, metadata that I'm able to repurpose and retarget using later. But that's a $500 in one pop. It was just my birthday. I came up on some cash, put it in Facebook, right? That's dope. But then what? Then I just fall off. Then I just stop. It would be better if you did $50 a month for 10 months. Now, it would be smaller each iteration, right? Each month, it doesn't seem like that's the same amount of investment. But I'm saying over time, not only would it give you consistency, people, would, because that's how marketing works, man. You can't just say, hey, there's a new movie coming out and it's over. Does, does Sony Pictures do that? This no. touch tell mm-hmm. you, hey, bro, there's a new movie coming out next summer, and they just leave it at that and hope you hope you get back with them. Nah, bro, they in your face, they in your your app, they in your phone, exactly. in your <laughs> they cool, bro. And so that's that's how you got to be. But I mean, they're consistent. They're and it, the commercial doesn't have to be crazy expensive. Going back to the Facebook ad example, mm-hmm. you know, you can do a small um, but consistent Facebook ad or social media ad. It doesn't necessarily have to be Facebook. Um, and it doesn't have to be ads either. I'm just mean consistency. Some of the great, some of the legends, they write every day. Now that's basic. When you're when you're joining Lucas, when you're Eminem, when you're uh, Wayne, I don't know how we feel about Wayne right now. <laughs> and on that, but I'm saying when you're at that level, think about all that they got going on. Think about all Jay Z has going on. When do you think he has time to like sit down and write books? He makes time. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like consistently without without that there's nothing there's really nothing to talk about how you're a rapper if you're not consistently rapping how are you a graphic designer if you're not consistently designing uh graphics you know how are you a a promoter if you're not consistently promoting um and that's going to help you learn and it's going to help your audience build trust with you it's like okay okay this dude is he's talking about this right even if for example somebody might be listening to the 1130 podcast for the first time today but they have an uh, innate respect for it because they can go back and see previous episodes. You see what I'm saying? Your past yeah. work can speak for you 
when when new folks lay eyes on you. So it, it's it's extremely important. It's extremely important. Um, it, it's it's probably the most important uh, factor. I mean, look at again, look at the game right now. There's no need to drop names, but there are some people who I think we can all agree are trash, but they're consistent. <laughs> they're consistent. You are right about that, man. You are right about that. So, so true, man. <laughs> so true. Uh, but we, we gonna move on here on the podcast, man. Uh, you mentioned, man, you're a music maker, man. You do, you publish music and everything. Uh, what, what got you into, uh, you know, making music and stuff? Man, originally I started making music, man. I might've been like 14, had an opportunity to perform for the, the mayor. I was at my school and okay. the mayor was coming in to, some college in the in the area and we i don't remember exactly it, it was some adult thing they had pulled some strings but we were able to perform for the mayor and it was martin luther king day so it wasn't just like let these 14 year olds rap about whatever we were rapping like about martin luther king and i thought that was so cool man i, I don't know how to really explain it because i mean i had like freestyled at the table with my friends and you just repeat whatever gratuitous violence and sexual stuff you hear on the radio and think you sound hard but to really take like subject matter, real subject matter, you know, like Martin Luther King Day and to be able to perform it for, you know, government officials as my first show, you know, it was my first opportunity performing. That really set me down the path of like, whoa, this is something that I can like really take serious. You know, uh, um, you can perform. And again, I was 14 performing for the mayor. That's not Elton John performing for the Queen, but it was that same path, right? And I was just like, whoa, this this could be much more than just freestyling on the bus with my homies. This could be, this is crazy. You know, I'm in, I'm in places I never thought I would be performing for, who kicks it with the mayor? You know what I mean? Like why why else would I be kicking it with the mayor? And so it was just such a great opportunity and it, and it put my mind on that trajectory of like, okay, if I take this serious, I will be introduced and rub shoulders with other serious people. Um, and then it also gave me the opportunity. Music itself just gives me the opportunity to express um, sometimes, especially, you know, in the culture we deal with anxiety on, a, on an extreme level, man. It, it gives me an opportunity to vent. It gives me an opportunity to connect. It gives me an opportunity to channel some of the things. Um, sometimes I'm talking with other people on my travels or while I'm on tour and things like that. They're not rappers. They're not songwriters, but they have stories. They have real stories. Uh, real experiences that they've been through and things that they've lived that I am able to, you know, with their permission and things like that, uh, put together and, and take bits and pieces of different stories and then create cohesive songs that, uh, that other people are able to resonate with. And that, that allows people to, you know, feel heard and to feel connected. And that for me is, is huge, man. It's all about people. People do business with people. Um, and music is, is very, very, um, deep rooted, you know, in our, in, in who we are as human mm -hmm. beings. And so I try to, to tap into that. And I, I think it's a blessing to be able to tap into that. And so that, that's why I do music, man. Hey man, that's what's up. That's, that's really, really cool, bro. Hey, it's all about, you know, you having that, you having that experience at the age of 14, man, and just believing, you know, one day, you know, that could be, you know, you can make so much more of it, man. And it's all yeah. about, you know, believing, you know, and having faith to, you know, to something that you, you know, really, really love. And uh, you, you song right, you do everything. Um, what's a favorite song that you wrote? I wrote. Man, one of my favorite songs. <sighs> my favorite, you know, when you make music, your favorite song is always the one you <laughs> like. You know, like, oh, this this joint I just did last night. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but for the ones that y'all could go find right now, if you wanted to find me on Spotify, iTunes, or you know, Bebo, High Five, whatever app is out there right now, Zoom. Um, the, the, the favorite song, I would say, Black Jays. Black Jays is dope, man. It's spelled like a J-A-Y-S. Um, and that's really about like the undersung, I think, voices in the community. Uh, but tell you what, tell you what. Favorite track, I, I that would be tough because it's tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. when, you, when you make music, it's very tough. But I will tell you my favorite project to date, and it's only five tracks, very simple, it was released in, uh, I want to say June of last year. It's called Shout Out Atlanta. I was down in Atlanta. Some amazing people around me had a wonderful team. Um, and we and we put out an EP, man. And that was right when things were locking down. Everybody was losing their mind. Everybody was, you know, wearing socks or whatever they could find them, putting on their face. So it was a really, really <laughs> weird time. Businesses were shutting down. Stuff was getting weird. And I just I just went into the zone. Um, and, and, and made some incredible music, worked with, like I said, some incredible people. So shout out Atlanta, I would say, is, is probably be 
is probably going to be something that your audience is going to get a kick out of. Because I, I love it all, but I want to make sure that I'm sending you to something that I think you'll actually enjoy as well. So y'all tap in the shout out Atlanta. By all means, let me know what you think. You know, you can find me, like I said, on, on Facebook and social media and all that. Slide the deuce. Um, I would love your feedback. Love to know what you, you know, if you guys make music, if you guys make beats, shoot me some beats. Let's uh, let's work, man. Let's work. I definitely want to, you know, use this platform to to connect with other geniuses out there. Hey, that's what's up, man. I'm, I'm I'm interested. I will be I will be down to be checking you out, man. Slide of deuce, man. Hey, uh, with, with, with the music game all crazy, man. What you think of the Grammys, man? Just you know, snubbing people. Man, I I, I um I really don't know how to explain the Grammys, man. I think the Grammys are one of those things. It's like it's cool. I think for tradition's sake. Mm-hmm. But in today's day and age, man, the Grammys is the Grammys is old school, man. The Grammys is not representative of what the streets are saying. The Grammys is not always representative of what the culture is saying. I mean, the Grammys speak for a very specific dynamic, right? Um, and there's some legends up there, you know, that have won Grammys and everything like that. And there's some legends that haven't. So mm-hmm. I just I don't get too caught up in it to to keep it a hundred with you, man. They're on the same page with me as the oscars the academy awards the mtv awards again it, it but but like i opened with i am more concerned with the wealth elements than the fame elements now mm-hmm. um i believe i mean and i know you can make a significant amount of money continuously and never be in the grammy discussion and i also know you can have a backpack full of grammys and be broke you know what I'm saying? That's unfortunate. That's that's not a sad. I mean, that's a very sad reality that sometimes happens. But I do know that it can happen. So just from my personal perspective, I don't get so much caught up in the accolades um, being the Grammys as much as I'm like, yes, another another royalty <laughs> disimbursement. You know what I'm saying? And those show up much more often than than you're ever going to uh, get a Grammy, even if you do get them. Yeah, hey, man. I just thought I'd ask, man, because it's some it's some cool artists out there that be getting snub in the music business, and the music business, man, is real. It's real, real grimy, man. So, uh, yeah, it man. And, it, and that goes back to when I was saying that there's levels, and you got to know what role you want to play. I feel that the Grammys, this is just my personal opinion, man, the Grammys, to me, are almost a reward for some of the systems that be. Right. They're, they're definitely involved in some ways with the overall political, socioeconomic arm of, of, of uh, governance. So in my opinion, they seem to be like if there's a narrative they want pushed and you're pushing this narrative, you'll be rewarded for that. But it's not necessarily did you make just the best music out there? There's too many other factors. It's like, are you the best musical influencer right now? And some of those things, I think, get baked into the decision making process. Who do you know? Who are your people? Same as when you're watching NCAA and you're like, OK, just because these guys, just because this college has been in the tournament for the past 30 years this year, this team is trash. They shouldn't get in just because of who they knew. And, you know, if if, if nobody state university is balling their ass off, they should be in the tournament. And I feel like that's how it is sometimes with the Grammys. You might be a breakout artist. You might be killing it. You might be living all your dreams. But this dude is uh, uh, Barry Gordy's nephew, and he married Sheila E.'s daughter. And, you know, there's some politics that are involved. And I'm not here to draw judgment. Again, I I just think that it's a little bit more complex than is this nigga CD slapping or album slapping. Nobody has CDs anymore. But, you know, is this this album slapping? Um, And so it's like, I don't even try to get upset about it and and and, and things like that um, until I win mine, right? Then they'll matter. Then then it'll mean everything. <laughs> hey, hey, that's what's up. <laughs> hey, that's what's up. Hey, man, your, your your slogan, man, is is let's get money. Tell me about it, man, because a lot of people, man, got it mixed up when it's all about let uh, let's get money, man. And I, I think your slogan is dope. You know, when it, when it's about let's get money. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. So what I'm talking about when I say let's get money, it's really uh, uh, the inflection is on get. Let's get money. I mean, get like comprehend. I mean, get like understand. I mean, let's really figure out what's going on here when we're doing our marketing campaigns and we know, okay, 
uh, Apple Music is going to pay 0. 0.00 X, Y, and Z cents, but Napster is going to double that. Now, again, going back to the culture and all that stuff, Napster isn't quote unquote popping like that no more, right? Apple Music is where you want to be seen. Title is where you want to be seen. But if Napster is paying you, it makes more sense for your ROI to invest your money into driving traffic to Napster. Somebody's going to Napster, and that's Napster's prop. Napster's business is to draw customers in to do their thing, and they're going to reward you more for for doing that. So that's what I'm talking about when I say, hey, let's get money. Let's really understand what we're doing it for, what we're attempting to achieve, and let's go out here and get it. So that way we can leverage our, our assets appropriately. We put in so much work as creatives. We put in, and, and what I find that is unfortunate is we, we tend to expect someone else who's more knowledgeable to give us the game and show us love, like all in one go. I want you to explain contracts to me and give me the best deal on a contract. What? Bro, this is like this knowledge stuff costs money. This education costs money. So I would advise, you know, invest in yourself, invest in your own education. Everything doesn't have to be externally facing. Everything doesn't have to be an ad. Everything, or and by everything, I mean every dollar spent. Every project that you have to do for self-growth and development it doesn't have to be a photo shoot, a new outfit, a new pair of J's. It could be a book. It could be um, stock. You can invest in, in the music space. You know what I'm saying? I don't necessarily have to make every song in the world to, to be able to invest in. I might buy Napster stock. I might buy Apple Music stock. So I put my songs on Napster because they're going to pay me the most in royalties, but I pay, I buy Apple stock because it's got strong market presence. And so Again, I, I get really excited about this, this stuff, as you can see. But the point <laughs> of what I'm saying is let's really get money. Let's really understand what we're trying to do. So we're not just let's just run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up. Check, check. That's cool. But if we run it up just to blow it in the morning, we're not <laughs> really doing so well. You know what I mean? Whereas if we can get money, stay down till you come up. You know, some of these stuff we still hear in rap songs. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's where my mindset is. And um, at the end of the day, I mean, let's get this money. We got to take care of our families. We got to take care of ourselves. You know, we want some of the better things in life. I don't want to just survive. I want to thrive. Um, and, you know, in our world, that that takes bread. And so that's where let's get money comes from. I like it. I like it, man. For real. <laughs> For real, man. Because a lot of guys will say, let's get money and it be gone by the morning time, man. And for real, man. And it's all about the mindset, bro. It, it, it's yeah. all about the mindset. Yo, man. Sly, man. You ain't you, you saying nothing but the truth, man. Nothing but the truth, man. But Sly, man, sit tight. And everybody, man, who's listening on EB Radio and watching on YouTube, man, sit tight, you guys. We got the rest of the show on the other side. I'm going to take a quick, quick, short break, you guys. And yo, don't go nowhere, man. Don't go nowhere. You're listening and you're watching, man, to the 1130 Podcast, man. I'll be right back. Get it? Everyone has something to say, a story to tell. We make it easy to share yours. So let's talk. Regardless of your podcast setup, hit record. And from there, whether your podcast reaches 10 people or 10 million, we can help you get heard wherever listeners are. And who knows, maybe even quit your day job. But no matter who hears you, it's about connecting and sharing something from your perspective. It's about having a voice and using it without anything standing in your way. Say it all with mm. Anchor. Yo, you guys, man, welcome back here to the 1130 Podcast, man. Appreciate you guys sticking with me throughout the commercial break, man. I got my guy, Slide the Deuce, in the building, man, from Denver, Colorado, man, chopping it up about business strategies, man, and just networking and everything, man. You doubled your income, man, throughout the COVID, man. Uh, yeah. Can you tell my listeners about that? Yeah, man. So I actually was able to double my income streams, Um and by that, I was, like I was saying earlier, clarify exactly what you want to do, right? I was making music. I had been making music for 10 or so years. Excuse me. Then I started my own publishing company. It, I don't know why it took me that long, 
but it did. And again, if it takes you a while, all that matters is getting started today. All that matters, don't, don't delay because it's because you've already delayed. You know what I'm saying? Don't hold off on something because you already held off on something because you already feel late. There's no time like there's no time like now. And so one, I started to read more and more and more and more and more. And the way that I am, I like to talk. I like to share the information that I have. And so what I did was, and I think this is a key for anybody that's out there listening to me. If you know how to do something, you already have two income streams automatically baked right in. Because not only do you know how to do it, but you are now in a position to show others how to do it, which can honestly be far more productive. Uh, it's an infopreneur. If you're familiar with the term, there's an entrepreneur and then an info. Infopreneur sells information to entrepreneurs. The most lucrative space you can be in is selling information. Um, and so, but but you got to also do that with honor and integrity right? And this isn't a Game of Thrones recap. I'm just, I'm just saying these words are real. They used to mean something, right? But I'm saying there's a lot of places out there right now on Instagram or whatever, and they're, they're selling you this, you know, here's what you don't know. Pay us $99 and we'll, add, we'll get you registered and we'll do X, Y, and Z. And then when you just go and read it yourself, you find out most of these services are free. These services might cost $50 at max, you know, and these guys are charging you 150 bucks to do some of this stuff. Um, now I'm not knocking their game. The game is to be sold, not told. Uh, but, but you got to really learn it for yourself. You got to study it for yourself. Um, and so going back to doubling the income streams, taking that knowledge and then not just freewheeling it, not just making it up as I go, but I built a course I built. I said, okay, if I, it took me a long time to get this information. If I were brand new coming into this, how would I want it presented to me so that I could move forward and make progress faster at a faster rate? I built that, put that together. And then I started to sell that. Um, but my main focus, right, is still the continuation of music and growing my music publishing company. So I didn't become an Instagram, hey, take my course for $89.99. I, I didn't become one of those guys. I do have a course. I mean, I'm more than happy to get on the phone with you. That's what I generally do, just do a, a private consultation with you. Um, so that way I can stay fluid. I can still maintain my schedule and things like that. But it also allows me to work with real life creatives, we can make real life tangible music. And then, I mean, as we're walking through the process, it's really happening in real time. I'm showing you how to register something on ASCAP, but that something is your actual song. You're actually going to generate royalties at the end of talking with me. You're, you'll actually be in position to, oh, snap, I have a PRO account. I have a distribution account and I have revenue that is being built. Um, then we can go, you know, the next step. And I've got clients that I worked with in the past that call me to be in their music videos and call me to hop on songs with them because they know that I'm going to take their music serious and I'm going to take their time serious. So leveraging that together, I was actually able to um, double my income streams, man. It was it was crazy. I did double my income as well. Um, I just I say that I want my, the listeners to take that with a grain of salt because I'm not telling you in any way that the day you start some of this stuff you're going to double your income. Um, I, I started back in 2008 with this mindset of, I need to own my own stuff. I worked with producers that I had, uh, you know, homegrown relationships with. I had lots and lots of what, what they call throwaway beats. Uh, these beats that producers didn't want anymore or had decided they were going to, you know, sell for the low at one point. I was buying them up over the years. So once I had a publishing company, I had a lot of material that I was able to publish and, and, and do and go through these systems. So I just want to be clear. This is still the move to make. I would suggest this, but I just want to be clear. I'm, I'm not saying that you're going to double your income the moment you get started, um, but you can double your income streams. Um, and that that's the name of the game really is, is, is keep increasing those. And then you're getting money from left and right. So even if one of them goes slow, right. Haven't dropped an album. I dropped an album in January, but I'm just saying, if you haven't dropped an album this year, uh, you might still have some consultation money coming in and then consultation money pays for studio time. And then, you know, so you can, you can leverage some of these things um, to help pay for themselves. And that way you're making a continuous profit across the board. Okay, man. That's, hey, that's all knowledge right there, man. I, I dig it. I dig it right there, man. Hey man, what, what, what keeps you uh, inspired? Man, that's a, that's a good question. Honestly, I, I, I think that I'm a, um, 
I'm a professional hater, if that makes sense. I think that like <laughs> when I listen to the radio, man, I get so I get so irritated. Like I get so mad. I, I can already tell I'm gonna be that uncle that's like back in my day, they used to really rap. <laughs> you know, I can already tell that's going to be me. But here's what I won't do, though. I won't just sit back and complain because that makes you just a hater. That's what I'm saying. When you just when you just sitting around talking about how Soldier Boy's album is whack, the natural question is like, well, when's your album coming out? When when you going to do something? Exactly. You could, and I'm, I'm I'm using ancient names in the music space nowadays. You know, YFN Lucci or whoever is popping right now. You know, Rod Wave. Rod Wave is tight. Rod Wave is tight. But I'm just saying, if if you're just going to sit back and, and and comment on it. That's doing nothing. Where if you're really going to say, man, I could rap better than this dude. OK, do it. That's how I talk to myself. Right. OK, do it. Hey, if if, if and, and then what I also I, I would say that's how I started. And now I've matured to. Don't be so concerned with what you don't want to be. Don't be so competitive where you always trying to out rap somebody. If anything, try to find the people who you do look up to. You know, speak to the people who do support you. There's so many times when I'm listening to music and it's hater this and hater that. And I'm like, well, damn, I'm not I'm not a hater. I I, I bought the album. So when do you when do you say something to me? You know what I'm saying? Like the whole album is telling me how I ain't shit. I'm broke. You fucking my bitch. I'm like, damn, bro. I, I, bought the album. <laughs> I thought we was cool. You know what I'm saying? So, so my mindset was like, I really want to make music that will encourage and inspire and make the person who's listening to it feel like I know I'm actually talking to you like hey bro I appreciate you you could be anywhere in the world right now but you here listening to the 1130 podcast you here right now listening you know to my album on Spotify you here right now uh on my gas stop podcast you know what I'm saying so I wanted to do something that was going to be appreciative to them and that that was for my own self man if you're just walking around using hate and anger to motivate you it's a great motivator it is but it's also going to become you, you know what I'm saying? You can only hold that mm-hmm. for so long before it starts to actually become you. And, and that leaks into other areas. Yeah, you're nice on the mic. You, you, know, you might be eating them on the mic, but you're also kind of getting more aggressive with your loved ones. You're getting more aggressive at work or, or wherever you are, you know, like anger and, and hostility can actually start becoming your personality. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I didn't want that for myself. And so that's what I think motivates me most. And also, because my story started so young, you know, at 14, man, I, I know the power and the impact that this can have on, on on young people. And so I would say that they are probably my biggest motivator, man. I've been a, um, a you know, a foster brother. My, my parents have got foster kids for, for man, maybe the last 10 years. Uh, and my mom did child care since before I was born. So I've always grown up around around, you know, the kiddos. Sly loves the kids. Um, and I, I think about them a lot when I write, because I remember what it was like being that kid, listening to somebody rap, you know, I might never meet this guy, but he's like, he doesn't know I'm defining my life by what he's saying. He doesn't know that I'm trying to be him because of what he's saying. But I, now that I'm an adult and recognize, Hey, somebody might be, again, it might not pop. It might not be multi-platinum. I might not win a Grammy, but somebody somewhere, some kid I never meet might define his worldview based on what I'm saying. So I need to keep that in mind when I'm spitting. Hey man, that's really, that's real cool, man. For real, for real, real really motivational right there, man. Hey yo, man, it's a lot of deuce, man. I appreciate you joining me here on the 1130 podcast this week, man. Yo, before you go, man, uh, yo, uh, networking, man, cause I do a lot of networking, man. Okay. But talk about networking, man, and, and how powerful it is. Um, when it's done right, man, um, is there a wrong way to network in your opinion? is there a wrong way to network um a wrong way i don't know there there are some there are some ways that are better than others though i will say lateral can be much more powerful and tangible than upward movement and by that i mean find people that are on your level bro everybody's trying to like reach up to the to the next level and i think that there is first of all many more opportunities available to you where you are or again what i was able to do was leverage hey if i'm already here that means somebody must be here i mean right just if i've been growing somebody's got to be at one of them steps i was at before let me go back and, and 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 become a resource to them 
uh, and that's, that can be an incredible means of networking. And so what I mean by lateral is like I'm saying, reach out to people that are on your level um, and actually bring value. That's, that's, that's the other thing about moving laterally. You're probably able to provide more value to people that are right there on your level. If you called up Drake right now and was like, hey, bro, you should, we, we should link up. He, he might say, okay, for what? <laughs> well, because... You got a million dollar studio and you got a million dollar publicist and you got a million dollar photographer. And I was just thinking it would be cool if we linked up. <laughs> That's, <laughs> that don't sound right, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But where if I could say, hey man, I reached out to you. Like perfect example right now, man, this came apart. This came to be by lateral marketing. You see what I'm saying? I reached out to this gentleman. I said, man, you got an amazing show. I love what you got going on. I would love to be a part of that. I've got some things that I could discuss. Let's make sure it makes sense for your audience, right? I want to make sure that, that your people are being taken care of. He said, all right, you know, gave it a look, got back at me. Long story short, we made it do what it do. And this is going to open the door to more opportunities. You know what I'm saying? There are going to be people that that are part of my fan base that are now uh, lifelong listeners of yours, right? Somebody from your fan base is going to go check me out on Instagram or check me out on Facebook. And you and I ourselves are going to continue to talk. You know, this is just mm-hmm. the surface. They don't they don't see all of our direct messages to each other. They don't know we were just laughing, you know, 20 <laughs> minutes before the show started. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna continue to grow and and so it's, it's it's live and in action and I think the if there was a wrong way to do it I would say by thinking there's a wrong way to do it if if you're thinking that every networking interaction is gonna turn first of all every networking interaction is not with a customer so if you think man this dude didn't buy something from me that wasn't worth my time then you're you're looking at networking wrong because sometimes you might need to be the customer to gain the relationship. Sometimes no transaction needs to happen. It's just about relationship. Um, And going back to consistency, when you're networking with people and you meet one person at one hotel event, then you never call them for two years and then you hit them up like, hey bro, throw me a beat. That's not the same as a consistent relationship. That's not the same as being in contact. Hey bro, just checking in. I see you still doing your thing. You know, it doesn't have to be long drawn out boardroom meetings, but just stay consistent with these people um, and, and really only network with folks that, well, you got to take this one with a grain of salt, but I was going to say network with people that are actually going to help you get where you're going. Uh, I don't mean that to say blow off people or write off people if right off the bat, it doesn't seem like they're going to help because you, you never know who you're talking to, especially in this music game. You be rubbing shoulders with all these rappers if you want to and say something rude to the square off to the side of the room and you find out that's the actual music executive. That's the label head that you just you know bumped into like you wasn't nobody. That can be that could be an issue. Um, but just, you know, be yourself, you know, don't, don't feel like you got to force it and, and, and let it happen, man. This networking thing I think is, is beautiful. You got to be open to it. Um, but anybody that's listening to your podcast has already got, you know, the the right mindset. You, you cultivated again, a great group of people. So, uh, they feel me. (laughs) Hey man, that's what's up. (laughs) That's what's up. Hey, yo man, Slider Deuce, man. I appreciate you joining me this week here. On the 11.30 podcast, yo, man. Hey, yo, before you go, uh, any shout outs, any questions, uh, anything you'd like to say? Uh, I just want to shout out everybody that's listening, man. Everybody that's doing their thing, grinding out there, you know, making it. I- I've been there. I've been where you are. I've been when it didn't make no sense. And and all you had was this music. Stick with it. Stick with it. Um, if I can be of any help, by all means, let me know. You can you can book some time with me on my IG page. There's a, there's a book now feature. Uh, you can also do the same on Facebook. I just want to give you a shout out, man. I really, really appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate what you got going on, the opportunity that you're providing to me and other geniuses out there. Um, shout out to the Gas Stop, everybody out there in Dallas, everybody in Denver rocking with Team Outlandish. I really appreciate y'all, man. And uh, y'all be blessed, man. Hey man, I appreciate it so, so much, man, for real. Thank you so much for joining me, man. It was a dope time chatting with you, man. You cracked me up. I didn't know you was going to say that because we was just laughing before we got <laughs> away. Hey, yo, man, this has been a cool, cool episode, man. Yo, um, stay safe out there. I know it's some crazy times, man. Stay prayed up. Keep doing your thing, man. It's a lot of dudes, man. I appreciate you joining me this week on uh, the 1130 Podcast. Thanks, man. Peace. Yo, man, Slider Deuce, man. I appreciate you joining me this week on the 1130 Podcast, man. It was a dope-ass time chatting with you, man. For real, dope, dope time. I'm learning something. I learn something each and every week, man. They say we learn something each and every day. If you ain't learning something each and every day, there's something, something, you know, wrong with you, man. But, man, you know, sitting here, you know, just 
you know, hearing you speak your game, man, and talk facts, man, just about, you know, business, black business and, and the music game and just everything, man. I'm just learning it, man. Like I, I told, you know, a story a bunch of times, man. I wrote music, man, and you know, as, as a young whippersnapper, you know, and did that thing. But, you know, I always, you know, I won't go back to it. But right now, my focus is where is that right now. But, man, I appreciate you joining me here for the 1130 podcast this week, man. For real, dope, dope, dope time chatting with you, man. You guys, man, go follow Slide the Deuce on all social media platforms, man, and check out his music, man. For real, man. You got to check out the music, man. For real. Yo, man, I had so much fun chatting with my man Slide the Deuce, man. I forgot my WTF moment, man. And <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and deliver it, man. And I ain't going to waste no time, man. Y'all already know what it is, man. It's time for the WTF moment of the week, you guys. <laughs> Yes, man. The WTF moment of the week, man. I got two of them this week, man. Yes, two of them this week, and it is crazy. Yes, crazy. Um, Yo, it's like, what, two months until Father's Day, man. And uh, this guy right here, man, uh, won't be considered uh, father of the year at all. I don't even think he'd probably be in the nominees, <laughs> probably for the next couple of years or whatnot. But, man, hey, he took his two-year-old toddler, man, to the zoo, you know, you know, see the animals and whatnot. You know, a lot of people, man, take their kids to the zoo, man, and see the animals, you know, look all nice. Hey, you see the gorilla, you see the elephant or whatnot. But, I mean, when you're taking your kid to the zoo, you don't expect to go into the cage where the actual animal is at, you feel me, in their habitat. You feel me? That's their domain. That's their area. You feel me? You 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 liable to get fucked up, you feel me, if you go in, into wherever the animal is living at. But long story short, man, the, the dad, um, of course, you know, took his daughter to the zoo, but they went into, you know, the cage where the um, elephant was at, man. And man, the elephant come charging at him, you know, you know, all that, man. And boom, if, if it wasn't for the spectators and everybody who was just watching and who was at the zoo, they're telling them, yo, man, hey, turn around, yo. And, and not only that, as the, and it's not even funny, yo, man, it's that ass serious, man. He is, is 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 him not being a responsible dad, man, and not you know everybody knows that yo man you you're not gonna go in there and fuck with the uh, animals, bro. That's they space, that's they zoo. They already locked up and caged up at the zoo already at that. So you know, I mean, him and the daughter now trying to escape. Once they see the elephant coming, he fumbles the kid now, but the dad is arrested and WTF. This morning, a 25-year-old father arrested facing possible charges of child cruelty oh. after a dangerous encounter at the San Diego Zoo. Oh. The father allegedly getting through two fences, one of them electric, carrying his two-year-old daughter into an elephant habitat. The two-year-old juvenile was taken into the elephant enclosure by a male who climbed over the fence and through the rope. Police say the man was trying to take a photo when a startled elephant began to charge. Looks like the elephant charged at the male and the male dropped the juvenile as he ran away. The man briefly dropping the child before picking her up. The elephant coming within feet before they escape. And we were standing right there yelling, dude, what are you doing? Get out of there. Get the baby out. Remarkably, both coming out unharmed. The elephant, one of more than 3,500 rare and endangered animals at the world famous zoo, also saved. Really, really crazy, man. Second WTF moment of the week, man. I guess after my man Biden, man, um, you know, got all them stimulus checks out and, you know, was signing all them checks out, wrote in the bill, man. My man got on the plane. And of course, what happened down in ATL, man. My condolences go out to all the families down there, man. Sad, sad stuff. But my man getting on, my man Biden, <laughs> President Biden getting on the plane, man. And he's tripping and tripping and tripping. I mean, you know, he's just falling and falling. I mean, like, Biden, what's going on, my man? Like, take your time. This is one of those catch your breath moments where everyone watching saw the president lose his footing a couple of times going up the stairs there. The White House says this was in one sense perhaps caused by the wind. It was just a misstep. He did not require any medical attention. He's just fine, they say. Take your time, man. <laughs> Take your time. Speaking of those stimulus checks, man. Yo, people, man, just don't be out here just buying wow and shit, man, that you normally don't buy. For real, save some of the money, do something productive with it, invest in whatever, you know, yeah, like if you got a business or you do whatever, or you got a podcast, such as the 1130 podcast or whatever, you know, invest in it, do whatever, man. 
or you know, hey, you might just reach the milestone and you might want to celebrate. That's cool and all, man. But don't be like Ray J, man. I mean, yeah, be like Ray J in the sense though, where my man got some head, uh, earphones in. They doing the damn thing. So he just reached the milestone. And by reaching the milestone, my man Ray J went to go buy some goats, though. Like, I mean, what the hell is he going to do with some goats, though? I mean, he ain't buy a dog. He ain't buy a cat. He ain't going to get a horse. At least he could ride the horse. You feel me? <laughs> At least he can get on the horse. I don't know what the hell he going to do with the goat. You feel me? I, I, I really don't know. So, like, Ray J, man, come on, man. They ain't got nothing else to do. So I'm telling you, when, when you ain't been in the limelight, you ain't been in the spotlight for so long, you got to do the most biggest and wildest shit to stay relevant. Like, like Bow Wow, mixing it up with WWE. Like, come on. Come on. Crazy times we leaving in. Man. Speaking of crazy times we leaving in right now, man, to each his own, man. And I'm pretty sure after a while, maybe um, the summer, the end of the year, probably everybody um, in the country is probably going to get vaccinated or whatnot. Hey man, hey, to, to, for us to get back to normal and whatever it takes, then let's do it, man. But hey, Krispy Kreme, man, Krispy Kreme, yes. Krispy Kreme is giving out a free donut every day of the year if you've been vaccinated. So for everybody, man, who like Krispy Kreme donuts, man, for real, I like the glazed ones, though. I ain't been vaccinated yet, but hey, you know, that's, that's, that's my prerogative or whatever. But hey, yo, man, hey. Krispy Kreme Donuts is giving out a free donut every day of the year, man. So everybody who got vaccinated, man, and you got the munchies, or you might just need something, you know, to hold you off until you get to dinner or lunch, man. Hey, Krispy Kreme got a donut for you. <laughs> they got a donut for you, man. Crazy, crazy. Uh, but you guys, man, we're going to move on on here uh, on the 1130 podcast before we get on out of here, man. Um, I said, man, uh, my condolences go out to all the families, man, down at ATL, man, uh, that everything going on, man. Please, let's stop the whole Asian, you know, hate thing going on, man. Let's stop it all. Let's stop the hate, man. And, you know, because we already, as a country, trying to get back to normal. And I think this is like the biggest mass murder or whatnot, or the biggest murder, you know, that took place in this country in a couple of years, you know, Mary and coronavirus and whatnot but you know it's really really sad and whatnot hearing the story man you know like everybody man who need help who need mental help that's going through something man talk to somebody man talk to somebody you got my man Dez Brown right now in the NFL um who's um trying to be a coach a mental coach for guys who are in the NFL because you know they struggle with a lot of trauma uh post you know football but um, yeah, man, everybody speak up, man, because that guy who did what he did down at uh, the ATL, man, is real sad, man. It's real sad. And he was really going through some really mental issues. Not take away on what he did, man, but it's, it's just we need to stop the hate and let's just be united as one, man, for real, because it's just so crazy. My man had sex addiction problems and, you know, like uh, somebody was saying, why did he go to prostitutes? He felt like a spa was much safer. Like, it's just so crazy, man. And, you know, he was already having suicide thoughts. So, like, people, man, if you need help out there, talk to somebody, man. For real. Talk to somebody. For real. Hey, yo, man, for real, man. We about to get on out of here, man, on the 1130 podcast. This has been a dope, dope episode, man. And, yo, it is spring, man. It is spring now. For real. I hope everybody out there stay safe, you know. So, you know, the weather is breaking a little bit, you know. But in certain places, cases going up. But let's let's everybody do your part, man. So we can get everybody down, uh, everything back to normal for real, man. Don't be like the crazy dudes, man, on spring break or whatever, getting arrested and running away from the cops or whatnot. Like, no, like, come on, <laughs> come on, yo. But yo, man, this has been a dope ass episode. I'm about to be on out of here, yo, man. Hey, yo, before I go, you guys, don't forget to follow the 1130 podcast on all social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter at Dre on Wheels. Follow me on Instagram at the 1130 podcast. Like the 1130 podcast on Facebook. Subscribe. Yes, subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe, man. If it's red, it's supposed to be gray. Hit it. Hit it right now. Go ahead. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm going to wait. I'm waiting. For real. For everybody who listens on the radio, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to wait, you know. For real. I'm going to wait. For real. I ain't, time is money, though. 
for real. <laughs> but go ahead, man, hit that subscribe button, smash the notification bell so you don't miss an episode when the 1130 podcast upload, man. You did. And also, you guys, man, the 1130 podcast talk pro wrestling each and every Friday where I interview some of your favorite independent referees, ring announcers, uh, you name it, you guys. All wrestling, you guys. Join me on um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on the 1130 Podcast YouTube channel, man. For real, we are on the road to WrestleMania. I'm excited, man. For everybody down in Florida, we're going to get them tickets. Hey, yo, stay safe, man, and hope you guys have fun at WrestleMania. So, we full-fledged. Fast Lane was cool this past Sunday. So, man, hey, I'm excited. I'm excited. Can't wait to uh, pro wrestling uh, this week, you guys. So, hey, hey. I love it. I love it. Hey, and if you want to be a guest on the podcast, email me. That's the1130podcast at gmail.com. The1130podcast at gmail.com. Or just DM me on social media and stuff like that. You can work something out, you know? Try to work, man. It's been a fun episode, man. Until next week, you guys, man. I'm done talking my crap for this week. <laughs> it's been a fun episode. I appreciate everybody, man. I thank everybody for the support and the love of the 1130 podcast. I'm shooting it back you guys' way, man. Stay safe, stay prayed up, stay blessed, man. Yo, until next week, you guys, Shaman Dre, AKA Dre on wheels. And I'm out. Mm-hmm.